this makes it makes me think of something that I have to ask about, or I want you to I want you to tell more about this. I in, in getting ready for this, I was going back and I saw another radiator problem that you had that I had not heard of before, which was an electrolysis issue with the radiator. Yes. And c- can you explain what that was and what was going on with that? Yeah. So uh, the STI, the basically the first time I took it racing out at Spokane County Raceway, blew the engine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I went to fix it all this white goo was coming out of everywhere inside the engine out of the coolant system out of the radiator out of the heater core i mean it was thick gobs of whitish goo Hmm. and i i knew this has to be electrolysis and i I just hadn't it it took me a while to figure it out but then if you go to like I think Koyo Red and Mishimoto and definitely CSF and Ron Davis and all these other mm-hmm. radiator companies, they all have a big warning on their websites about, you know, avoid electrolysis okay. and what you need to do. So what happened on mine was um, the previous owner of the STI, I bought it used, right? Mm-hmm. They had put a, a coolant temperature sensor in the radiator. Okay. And, Okay, so they're getting, they're trying to measure the, and a lot of people will do something like they'll put it at the beginning of the radiator and they'll put it on the other end of the radiator so they can get the differential and get all this data and stuff. Well, I had one in the radiator. Unfortunately, the wire that went to that to provide a ground to that sensor, it broke inside the little, um, the, the basically where it attaches, but you couldn't see uh, it from the, the outside. The, the, the fitting of the sensor. Yeah. It, it, the little wire snapped inside the connector, but mm. you couldn't see it from the outside. But when I finally took it apart, I go, Oh, well, the, it's not even grounded. So how does okay. it ground? The power is coming into the sensor and then it's grounding through the coolant back into the engine through the, oh. to the block back okay. to the alternator. Oh, so the, wow. the coolant becomes the ground. Okay. When the coolant becomes the ground, really bad things happen with aluminum engines and aluminum oh, no. radiators. <laughs> right. Because now you're, you're including that aluminum in the ground. The circuit. electrolysis goes crazy. And this wow. engine was basically almost new. It wow. only had a few hours on the track and it was already so gooed up it, The engine would have failed if it wasn't, I think it failed for other reasons, but it would have failed because of that. um, For sure. That's crazy. That that's one of those, like you see a lot of the, a lot of times the sensors, the fittings I see for the sensors is to put it inside the hose, like a hose adapter. Yes. And, and I think that's probably a little bit better, but no, that's a bad idea too. You don't like that one. Okay. (laughs) I don't want, I want it to be in the block. Oh, okay. Where, where the that way the ground is. is actually going to go through the block back to the battery and the alternator. Okay. And there's sure. no chance it's going to go through the coolant then. Sure. And of course, okay. the radiator is isolated from everything itself because right. it's got the rubber grommets. That's why they use rubber grommets on the bottom of the radiator. You don't so just it's solid mount connected. it. It's, it's partly because of the shake, but it's also because it's not electrically connected now to your car. Gotcha. And it, with the engine block, because of the engine grounds, the ground, it's uh, the engine block itself is exactly. grounded so that if you're putting the sensor on there, it's okay. Yeah. That's uh that's a really good piece of information to, to kind of just file away. The, yeah, there's, I'll save you about $10,000 in a race engine. <laughs> there you go. That that's gotta be one of these things that like, you never like really helpful information that you never thought you would need to know, but then there it is. Yeah. And it, when you, when you run it through that way, it makes total sense. Right. But until you run into it like that, it would probably never dawn on you that that actually the position of the sensor in in the cooling system or in the engine or whatever is actually something where there really is some thought that could go into it that, that could. And make I a think difference. that warning is actually printed on the Koyo Red box that the radiator oh, wow. comes in. Okay. I think I, I think I cut that out. I could give it to you to add as a picture later. I've got a couple boxes here. I can basically says. <laughs> Yeah. Yes. 
Like if it's if it's on the box, I'll put it up in the podcast. You'll be looking at it right now. It's <laughs> it's one of those, you know, read the instructions and that's the first thing that yeah, we throw yeah. out. But yeah. it's like, oh, well, there's, it's there's like actually the instruction. <laughs> it's like the instruction that comes with the machine motor radiator. It tells you do not use the machine motor radiator cap. Right. <laughs> or the Subaru. Yep. yep. <laughs> Who yep. reads that? Who reads that? Yeah. That's the thing that I still to this day have never understood is that they ship the radiators with the caps on the radiator. <laughs> so that like just the natural instinct is like this is how it's it came, this is how it should be. But then yeah, the fine print is like, yeah, don't do this. Like, why yeah. do you ship it that way if that's not who knows? But, but there you go. <laughs> there you go. That's okay. One of those so things. I think we've right? covered radiators now. Yes, yes. Thanks for tuning in. To hear the whole conversation, click below for the full episode of this podcast or tune in every week on iTunes or Spotify. If you like these episodes, be sure to like and subscribe to the channel because your support is what makes all of this possible. As always, this show is brought to you by Flatirons Tuning, your premier source for any Subaru OEM or aftermarket parts. Check out our website at flatironstuning.com and as always, stay tuned with Flatirons Tuning.